On this episode of China Uncensored, a plane crash mystery in China. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is hurting the CCP, and a food crisis is coming. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. What you're looking at is the terrifying final moments of a passenger plane in China. The plane plunged 26,000 feet in the span of just 95 seconds. All 132 souls perished. The crash has experts baffled. The Boeing plane went from cruising altitude to practically a nosedive straight to the ground. Weather had been fine on Monday, and communication between the flight crew and the ground was normal before the crash. Now, Boeing planes have had serious safety issues in the past. The Boeing 737 MAX was grounded globally after two crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia several years ago. It turned out Boeing had manipulated the plane's safety tests and was forced to pay more than $2.5 billion to settle criminal conspiracy charges. However, this wasn't the Boeing 737 MAX. It's a 737-800, a plane with an immaculate safety record. According to a former pilot of this model of Boeing plane, it's hard to get the airplane to do this. A former investigator for the National Transportation Safety Board said the plane is designed not to take steep dives like that. You need something to hold the nose down. As of this recording, the plane's cockpit voice recorder has been found and an investigation is underway. So obviously there's only one way to respond to such a tragedy. Censorship. The Chinese government, faced with its worst airplane disaster in more than a decade, has moved to quickly control the flow of information. Censors have deleted online posts and comments about the crash, while Chinese state-run media have said next to nothing about what caused the disaster. Instead, state media has been dominated by scenes of emergency crews rushing to the scene, and orders from Chinese leader Xi Jinping to officials to do their utmost to find survivors. That's basically the Communist Party's playbook for any disaster. Ignore what caused it, and focus on how great the party is handling it. That'd be like if your parents came back from vacation and found the house on fire, and you said, Who cares how it started? Isn't it impressive how I almost saved the goldfish? After officials refused to answer basic questions about the plane crash, Chinese netizens said officials were issuing rainbow farts, a common idiom to describe excessive praise. An image I won't be able to get out of my head. Thanks for ruining Skittles forever. No one wants to taste that rainbow. And coming up after the break, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is really backfiring for the Chinese Communist Party. Welcome back. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is having a major impact on China. President Biden had a call with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, the first since November. And Biden warned Xi of consequences if China provides support for Russia. According to the White House readout of the call, Biden described the implications and consequences if China provides material support to Russia as it conducts brutal attacks against Ukrainian cities and civilians. The details of what those consequences are, however, are a little unclear, which is pretty typical of all the problems the U.S. has had in dealing with China. For Xi's part, during the call, he refused to call Russia's invasion a war, instead calling it a crisis. Replacing the word war with crisis is the weirdest form of censorship I've ever seen from them. Especially when watching movies Crisis Horse, World Crisis Z, and The Crisis Eors. Xi Jinping also used a favorite Chinese saying of his, Let he who tied the bell on the tiger's neck take it off. Which means that's all America's fault. Although she also said the U.S. and China must shoulder our share of international responsibilities and work for world peace and tranquility. In other words, the U.S. has to work with China. For more on that, check out this recent episode about how China wants Russia to be the new North Korea. I'll put a link to that below. But right before Russia's invasion, China imported twice as much liquefied natural gas from Russia in February than a year earlier. That's why China is concerned about what it calls spillover from sanctions on Russia. The sanctions on Russia are really getting in the way of China doing its regular business with the country. For example, China's Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank has suspended all activities in Russia. 
That puts on hold $1.1 billion worth of lending that Russia could really use. Don't you hate it when your profits are affected because your business partner commits war crimes? Geez, bro, if you're gonna commit atrocities, at least learn to cover it up like we do. The point is, the Chinese Communist Party hates sanctions. That's why China's vice foreign minister said, history has proven time and again that sanctions cannot solve problems. Sanctions will only harm ordinary people, impact the economic and financial system, and worsen the global economy. That's funny, because a lot of the sanctions on Russia are actually targeted sanctions. That means they only hit corrupt officials, blocking them from having access to overseas bank accounts and properties. The same kind of sanctions both the Trump and Biden administrations have hit Chinese communist officials with. I wonder why they hate sanctions. Meanwhile, Ukraine is begging China to stop selling drones to Russia's military. Many of the drones Russia has used in the invasion were made by the Chinese company DJI, one of the world's largest drone manufacturers. One Ukrainian official tweeted, DJI, are you sure you want to be a partner in these murders? Block your products that are helping Russia to kill Ukrainians. DJI likely looked at their profit margin and said, yep, we should have been partners sooner. Besides the issue of sanctions, China has billions of dollars invested in Ukraine, all of which is at risk now. So however China thought Russia's invasion of Ukraine would go down at the beginning, the reality is proving to be quite unpleasant. And coming up after the break, two billion dollars have been seized from Evergrande. Welcome back. China continues to struggle with the CCP virus. China just locked down another city of nine million. The problem is China's zero COVID policy. It can't tolerate any cases, even mild ones. And so across China, Many medical workers are becoming overwhelmed, not by a wave of critically ill COVID-19 patients, but by a wave of not very sick ones. Which is terrible for healthcare workers, but incredible for hypochondriacs who've been saying for years they need to go to the hospital. And now, they may be stuck there. Hospitals all over the country are being forced into full or partial lockdown because of minor cases of COVID. That means non-COVID patients are being sidelined. Several people posted that their surgeries had been postponed due to a lockdown at the hospital. There were posts about medical workers sleeping in the hallways. And the vending machines are probably out of Kit Kats. The only thing that's left are Skittles, because no one wants to taste the rainbow. There are signs even the Communist Party recognizes it needs to back down. Last week, Xi Jinping said the government needed to control COVID with the smallest cost. Unfortunately, the Communist Party views Chinese lives as pretty expendable, so I'm not sure that will be a factor. Xi Jinping is basically Lord Farquaad, saying, Some of you may die, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Speaking of COVID deaths, I've talked several times on the show before about how unbelievable China's official COVID statistics are, especially their death numbers. According to the Chinese regime, tens of thousands of Chinese people got COVID in 2021, and only two died which has not happened anywhere else in the world. Well, all that's changed now because the Chinese Communist Party has reported the first COVID deaths in China since January 2021. How many deaths? Two. Okay, they're just messing with us now. Meanwhile, Hong Kong is also facing a huge CCP virus outbreak. Hong Kong went from zero COVID to the highest COVID death rate in the world. But because Hong Kong is not part of mainland China, their COVID numbers are less politically sensitive for the Chinese Communist Party. They can always blame the Hong Kong government for messing up. So the death rate is actually accurate. And as it turns out, 87% of people who died but were vaccinated got Chinese-made vaccines. Chinese vaccines aren't effective? Well, that's only something Chinese officials have admitted. But there are other diseases plaguing the Chinese Communist Party. The crisis over Chinese real estate giant Evergrande continues. Two billion dollars in assets have been seized. You see, Evergrande said that it won't be able to meet the March 31st deadline for publishing audited results for 2021. It's almost like they don't want people to know how much money they lost in 2021. But the two billion dollars is a drop in the bucket, compared to Evergrande's almost 300 billion dollars of total liabilities. This could have a huge impact on not just the Chinese economy, but the global economy as well. That might be why Chinese state-run media 
hasn't been talking about Xi Jinping's big push for common prosperity lately. The U.S. is imposing travel bans on Chinese officials involved with persecuting religious and dissident groups. In a statement, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, the United States rejects efforts by Chinese officials to harass, intimidate, surveil, and abduct members of ethnic and religious minority groups, including those who seek safety abroad and U.S. citizens who speak out on behalf of these vulnerable populations. The statement didn't say who or how many would be targeted by the new restrictions, but it does come shortly after an announcement by the Justice Department that China was hunting Americans in America. For more, check out this week's episode. But if you're wondering why the Chinese regime feels like it can get away with that sort of thing, look no further than the United Nations. China sits on the UN Human Rights Council, already a grim satire. That'd be like if the head of the International Coalition for Protecting Salmon was a grizzly bear. But it gets worse. For years, whistleblower Emma Riley has claimed the UN was sharing the information of Chinese dissidents with Beijing. Riley first made a complaint about the issue in 2013. The UN claimed they weren't endangering any Chinese dissidents and that they stopped giving that information to China in 2015. Riley says this issue is still ongoing. And after she came out with the story, she then said the UN was trying to fire her. And then they fired her. And now, Australian Judge Rowan Dowling, who was in charge of investigating the accusations, is saying the UN fired him just days before his ruling. He said that his two judgments relating to the case in the internal UN dispute tribunal were within 10 days of being released when he was dismissed in 2019 and this was probably known to management. He also called it an attack upon the independence of the judiciary. Wow, the UN is really going to war with anyone calling them out. Wait, sorry, going to crisis with them. If that wasn't enough, to give you a better idea of how horrible the UN is, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was the guest of honor alongside Vladimir Putin at the Beijing Winter Olympics. And, China won the support of dozens of countries in the General Assembly for its policies in Hong Kong and Xinjiang in 2020. Sounds like the United Nations needs to go the way of the League of Nations. China has been helping Iran launder money. A new report by the Wall Street Journal found Iran established a clandestine banking and finance system to handle tens of billions of dollars in annual trade banned under U.S.-led sanctions. And China or countries China has a big sway over, like Hong Kong, Singapore, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates, are fueling the exchange. According to the Wall Street Journal, this help has allowed Iran to continue its nuclear program, even while negotiating with the Biden administration. And China is facing a growing food crisis. Last year, massive flooding devastated China's breadbasket. Panic buying resulted in vegetables being more expensive than pork. China even made a law punishing people for wasting food. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine made things worse. In a March 17th article, China's Feed Industry Information Network reported that due to the war, Russia has suspended grain exports such as wheat and corn, while Ukraine has banned the export of wheat and bulk commodities. And this video recently went viral in China. It shows farmers in Shandong who were ordered by local officials to clear trees to make the land available for farming. Communist officials are basically forcing people to do this, even though it's not going to lead to good things. Kind of like when parents make their kids take accordion lessons. They're going to take a beating because of this. But it's not just that the farmers are going to go broke. Even worse, the area is prone to drought. Removal of trees can easily lead to soil erosion. Which will only make the food crisis worse, but don't worry, because then the Communist Party will force farmers in another province to cut down all their trees and grow more grain. That's the beauty of central planning. And we could not do this show without the support from viewers like you. So as a thank you to fans who contribute on our crowdfunding platform on Patreon or our exclusive social media community on Locals, I answer a question from them at the end of each episode. 
Today's question comes from Sensport on Locals. Y'all wouldn't happen to have a list of countries that have extradition treaties with China, would you? Well, that's a very good question, Sensport. We just had Benedict Rogers, a UK-based human rights advocate, on our China Unscripted podcast. Now, he was just threatened with life in prison for violating Hong Kong's draconian national security law. Crazy, right? You should check out that episode for the full story. But as China does that kind of thing more in the future, what risk is there to people who don't travel to China? Well, if you go to a country with an extradition treaty with China, technically, they could send you to China. Currently, China has an extradition treaty with 59 nations or jurisdictions. 39 of those treaties are ratified. I'll give you a moment to screenshot it. Sure, maybe you weren't planning to go to Iran or Kyrgyzstan, but there are some more popular travel destinations like France and Italy, South Korea too. Now, I can't imagine those countries actually sending me to China if I visited. But it is crazy how many countries have that kind of legal dealing with an authoritarian regime that constantly violates human rights. So, travel safe, friends. Thanks for your question and your support, Sensport. And thank you for watching. Join our exclusive social media platform on Locals, where you can interact with Matt, Shelley, myself, and the entire China Uncensored Locals community. It's free to join, and if you become a paying supporter, you'll get access to exclusive content and be able to comment and leave your own posts. Plus, you'll be helping make China Uncensored possible. Visit chinauncensored.locals.com for more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.